And I was like, you know, the worst thing that could happen is if you have to step up there and you take it and it's like the final one and you lose the World Cup for our country. Oh my God. You did not say, did you say that to me? <laughs> yes. Did you black it out? I was like, that's the worst thing that could happen. Hi everybody and welcome back to Snacks. I'm Sam Ewis. And I'm Lynn Williams, and this is a show about women's soccer, but it's also about how spring has sprung. I know. Do you I'm want to really talk about it excited. Now? I want to talk about it for a really long time. But first, let's tell everybody what we're doing today on the podcast. Lynn just got back from camp. Yeah. Obviously, a ton happened there. Um, we're going to talk about both national team games, about Mal, looking head towards the World Cup. Um, and go ahead. You say the next line cut you off we also <laughs> have megan rapino coming on the show for a conversation that i don't think anybody's gonna want to miss but let's get back to springtime the most important part of this the podcast. most important part of this whole podcast i recently have dubbed myself a seasonal goddess and the definition of seasonal goddess is when you just come back to life at each and every change of the season and after not seeing the sun for months and just being bundled yeah. up in boston for months it has been in the 60s and sunny, and I have been lounging like the goddess that I am outdoors. I got a, you know, a little bit of color on my face even. I can see I that a little bit. Can you? Yeah, like you're, well, you're a little red. Pink. Yeah. I know. I'm going to, I got to get back on my sunscreen game because it's friggin' spring. Yeah. You, everybody, please wear sunscreen no matter what the season. But yeah, oh. now the sun is back out. Sure. I mean, honestly, like winter in Boston, like you don't really have to. Fair enough. Um, I couldn't agree. I'm very excited. When I left, it was so cold till my bones cold. And now it's hot. I was just walking my suitcase up here and I was like, oh, I'm sweating. It's hot out here. And to think we have multiple more seasonal changes coming this year and during this podcast, we are going to get to have this conversation again during the summertime and then again during the fall time. I Which, know, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear what you have to get say. Me started. In our notes, it says Lynn Mystery News, because yeah. I have to tell you about my couch. Oh, my I sold gosh. my couch. Oh, my goodness gracious. Congratulations. So anybody Thank later you. on in the episode, when we try to sell you Lynn's couch, alert, it has already been sold. I know. It's crazy. I sold it um, when I was at camp, and I'm an idiot because now I have no couch. So I came home to no couch. How did you get it out? Oh, well, that was a whole debacle, too. I told the lady, you can come up and get the couch when I'm back. And she's like, well, we would really like it this day because we're going to get a U-Haul, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, I'll let my apartment know. Then my friend will come over and supervise. And then apparently the apartment forgot. So it was a whole debacle. But they got the couch out and nothing's stolen. So where are you looking for your new couch? Already bought a new one. Where, when is that coming? Don't know. Six weeks, it says. I'm hoping way sooner because if not, then... I'll be Lynn, for what? A you guys, I read some of your views that it said it was going to take two weeks. So I just went for it. I'm not making the best decisions on the couch front. That's the truth. Well, yeah, let's hope you don't need to sell this one. Yeah, but I did ask Becky because the couch has three pieces, but I think the measurement would have been too big with three pieces, but I think it's too small with two pieces. So I said, do you think I should get all three pieces or just two pieces and then see and then buy the third one? And she, because I was like, I don't want to do this whole process a million times. And she was like, Lynn get two pieces, and then just see. So that's where we're at now. That sounded like wise advice, but I feel like I need to speak to your parents about this because I don't know who taught you about the couch buying and selling process, but I, I don't think that they crushed it. <laughs> My parents would be so appalled. They'd be like, what is going on? Hopefully it gets here before Marley does, because if not, we're both going to be sitting on the ground. Do you think your parents are going to be mad at me that I just said that? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> When's what? Marley coming? In May. Well, I thought you said it was going to take two weeks. On the line, it says six, but I'm hoping two weeks. How's your elbow? Oh my gosh, I forgot. There's so much to talk about. Let's like wrap this up so we can get into all the things. But my elbow is um, improving. Um, Good. I'm hopefully in the brace for one more week. Naturally at camp, I was trying to get out of it day one. And they yeah. were like, no. And I was like, but please. Yeah. Um, but it's feeling better. It's just weak. My forearm. My forearm is so small and scrawny. Oh, my God. You're going to have to do stress ball squeezes. I, exactly. Okay. Let's move on. We're, let's talk about soccer. Lynn, you just got back from camp. You literally just landed. And this episode's coming out tomorrow. So you guys are getting a real up-to-date 
friggin' recap. Update. Yeah. I knew you were going to do that. An Say update. Friggin'? Update. No. <laughs> Does it mean I'm not a good podcaster? Correct. Precisely. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So the first game, starting with a happy moment, Emily Fox scored her first goal. Um, I know. She started this great dribble just like she does. And then she shot it and it went right in. It was a great shot. And I was really happy for her. Yeah. I think it caught everybody by surprise. I even think it caught her by surprise. <laughs> well, something tactical I was going to say was, you know, when a team is sitting low and they have a mm-hmm. lot of numbers deep against you. One of the like tactical solutions to that is to take some shots from outside because it draws them out to step to you. If they don't, then you just shoot, shoot it. Yeah. And hers just went in. So it worked and it wasn't even like a tactical thing. It was just a goal. I know. And it was good that she like kept it low too, because Mm -hmm. I feel like when it is a block like that and you're trying to take shots, like when they're high, they're just body shots, body shot, body shot, body shot. Yeah. Or if you're me, you just sail them over and they just see ya see ya (laughs) shoot for the moon and if you miss you'll land among the stars (laughs) but we had yeah she i'm just gonna ignore that you said that um (laughs) she scored which was like amazing i thought her celebration was so cute yeah and she i just think she was just like what my oh my gosh i can't believe i scored um and we'll get to this later but like two defenders are scoring i know i think it's great so do i I think it's great. Um, Obviously, a bigger story arguably coming out from that game was Mal's injury. I think it goes without saying we're so devastated for Mal. I can't imagine what it was like to be there and see it live. It was horrible to watch on TV. So we are thinking of her. We know that she tore her patella tendon. She had a successful surgery the other day. Um, So we're just thinking of her and sending her good energy. And um, yeah, we hope that she recovers quick. Yeah, um, we got to like hear from her a little bit like she sent a text um and then she you know when you send somebody a text and you're like please don't respond i'm just like letting you know i'm thinking about you well she like was responding to everybody which is so like selfless of her i guess i don't even know um but she seems to be in like really good spirits um obviously considering the situation so that's something you never want to see that happen you never want to see the stretcher um get called out and especially like in the fashion that it happened the second you see somebody go down and immediately waving um for help you know it's probably something serious so i think that like the way that everything was handled um and the way that the team was able to um, rally around each other and kind of just like shake it off I guess so you don't really think about that or like talk about Mm. it that much I know I know so much attention is on Mal and it should be but the way that everybody was able to put that aside for a moment and and complete the task at hand Mm -hmm. and just like compartmentalize was um I don't know like cool or crazy like I don't really know the word but yeah I mean I it was like admirable that people could handle that I something that struck me when I was watching was how like Rose and Lindsay reacted and Rose just sat right down at Mal's head and was like kind of petting her head and clearly comforting her. And even Lindsay being emotional, like it's, it is crazy that people can then return to a game. I mean, Mal is everybody's friend. Everybody loves her so much. She's such an important part of the team as a player and a person. And for you all to be able to return to the game is a signal of what great athletes and competitors you are. But obviously everybody had Mal in the back of their mind and we still just hope that she's okay. And um, that her recovery goes well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think when, um, obviously, when anybody goes down with injury, it's it's like devastating. But when it's something that's so visibly like, oh, like something is wrong, um, yeah. I think it's even more devastating. So yeah, credit to Lindsay and um, Rose and just like the medical staff and yeah. everybody who was able to take care of Mal so quickly. Um, but yeah, so in our thoughts, in our prayers, and... Um, yeah, now we sadly um, are going to have to move forward, at least for the time being. Like, obviously, we don't know what – I'm not her doctor. I don't mm-hmm. – I'm not in her medical staff. So, um, but yeah, for the time being, obviously, we have to play without her, which is devastating. For sure. So we're definitely thinking of Mal. Um, the U.S. went on to win that game, that first game against Ireland, 2-0. to zero. Lindsay Horan um, scored a penalty kick later in the game. And then to replace Mal for being injured, Alyssa Thompson was called up um, for mm-hmm. game two. Um, she played the full 90 minutes in the second game that the U.S. won 1-0. to zero. Um, Alana Cook scoring a 
Incredible goal from far out. Another defender scoring. Yeah, I just feel like there's so many. There was so many things this ca- this camp. We celebrated Becky's 200th and Julie's 100th in the first. We game. celebrated Julie's 100th and then we celebrated Becky's 200th and then we mm-hmm. celebrated. Like there was so much going on, and then obviously with Mal, that was like added another layer. And yeah. then Alana scores on her birthday, and <laughs> and Emily Fox scores her first goal, and then Alyssa's in. Like yeah. it was so like I don't even know what parts to touch on because it was a lot, a lot of milestones. I know. And then Julie's back. Like I saw the thing and it was like first game in 611 days, I think. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, time warp COVID. Cause I didn't even realize. Yeah, I know. Time did go by weird in COVID, didn't it? Yeah. And I still kind of go by like weird. It's been like three years. Of- I know. What? But it did feel like a lifetime ago. But anyways, how about Becky's uh, near goal oh, where she hit the crossbar gosh. oh my god i could feel everybody just go <gasps> oh my gosh i the the funniest part about that so obviously that was like it worked out perfectly the play and um we were training it the day yeah. before and so it was like becky and tierna like going on and off uh reps yeah tierna goes goal becky goes skies it tierna goes goal becky goes skies it again Tierna goes goal Becky misses and we were like oh dear (laughs) and then the game happened and it was like so perfect that I was like I "I can't believe this didn't go in I know that would have been I know I just feel like Becky is the sacrificial lamb like she just can't (laughs) score so all the other defenders can like I don't know all hail Becky I think it's gonna happen I would put money on it Becky always I mean, laughs. I hope so. Because people go, why don't you just take a PK? And she always goes, no. Like, if it happens, it happens. But I'm not getting, like, she always says that she just doesn't want it by a PK. And I'm like. I know. She goes, I'm not getting a petty a, PK. And I go, she's I'll take hero. it. She's such a hero. Like, I just friggin' love her so much. I don't know if everybody knows this, but when you have a 100 caps or, like, a 200 caps milestone in the room before the game, we'll do, like, a pregame meeting. And then we'll celebrate the person. And everybody goes up and talks about them and it's like very emotional and honestly we should probably move the location of that because people usually cry um but but, um with becky's it's just she's the 14th person to ever get 200 caps which is crazy and i think that of all the ones i've sat in on like that was the most powerful one Um, i can only imagine you don't realize i think when you're in it how much she's doing for the game until you take a moment to step back and realize that becky is the player's captain like through and through like she we've talked about this like she is my moral compass yeah everybody said that they were like when i'm doing something i think in my head would becky do this and if she wouldn't you don't and if you don't know you call her yeah. And if she would, then you're like, okay, fine. I'll, like, you never want to disappoint. Lindsay said this. Um, hopefully she's fine with me sharing. But she was like, the scariest moment I've ever had was I didn't track a runner. And Becky passive aggressively came up to me and was like, was that your runner? And she goes, uh-huh. And so she goes, all right. <laughs> and then in your hearts of heart, you're like, I yeah. disappointed Becky. And she made a joke, but it's kind of true. She, Lindsay was like, I'm more scared to disappoint Becky than I am the yeah. coaches. Yeah, for sure. It, yeah. And it's like, like you just respect everything Becky has done so much. She's mm-hmm. been through what we've been through. She knows how hard it is. Yeah. Even more so. Like, she's just done everything and she's done everything the right way. I know. So it's like, if she expects something from you, you're like, I must deliver on this. Like, I need to. Yeah. I like want your approval. Like, I want you to think mm-hmm. I'm good. I want you to respect me because she's just so worthy of our everybody's respect. I know. Did you realize, I didn't realize this, that when she was 26 or 27, she only had like 13 caps. So oh, she's wow. gotten 200 I think- caps in that amount of time. Yeah. I just think that everybody sees the Becky now and is like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, you're the best defender in the world and you build all these things. And I'm like, yeah, but she started so She got her chance so much later and yeah. it wasn't like, it wasn't this smooth. Yeah ride of what she is now and i think that that was uh like inspiring and like a reminder to somebody like me oh, yeah oh my gosh i don't know if i'm ever gonna get to 100 and i'm like here's she is at 200 yeah i know it's it's so cool moments like that are 
like one of the most special parts of being on the team when you get to celebrate somebody from mm-hmm. like a milestone or whatever it is. Yeah. Like I think it makes everybody in the room so appreciative of the journey and the person and everything they've gone through to get there. So I think that celebrating those moments is really important. I couldn't agree more. Both of them were emotional. Hers and Julie's. So I was like, ooh. It was so oh, funny. Yeah. We, Because, you know, like I like, am a kind of a sympathy crier too. Where I'm like, when I see people cry, Same. I just immediately start crying. Yeah. But Sofia Huerta with Julie's, I look over and she is bawling. Like, <laughs> bawling. And everybody's like, are you good? Like, are you going to be okay? Yeah, like, can you play in this game? Some of my earliest ones, like, I didn't know the girls that well. Like, I remember yeah. I, I was at, like, Shannon Box's retirement game and, like, Lauren Holiday. And at the time, like, I didn't know them that well. I was in one of my first camps. Yeah. And I was bawling. And they were probably like, who is this child at my thing crying? It was, it's, it's just such an emotional, like, moment. I know. You're like, I don't know why, but I just am I, touched I just by the moment. <laughs> Okay, so huge congratulations to Becky. That was amazing. You guys won that game one to zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the last friendly before your send off game before the World Cup. That send off game is going to be in July. Any other anything else to report about camp? You guys were in Austin and St. Louis, and now you're back. And now we're back, and we will have until that July camp. So I think that um, you know it's like it's a little scary, like scary times, stressful times. Those were the last two national team games that they get to see us. But at the same time, now you get to be in a flow and a rhythm with your club team for an extended period of time. Um, and I think that is exciting. Like literally anything can happen. So we got 100 days to the World Cup and we got however many days to that camp and the rosters drop. So so if everybody seems stressed, you know why. <laughs> the world is stressed. I'm just kidding. Um, it's going to be great. I'm so excited yeah. for you guys. I have a great feeling. And I'm excited to watch some NBCL games this weekend. Me too. I'm very excited. We we are jumping straight back into it. We have like games Friday, Saturday, then Wednesday, and then yeah. back Saturday, Sunday. So it's it's going to be a full week of soccer. Okay, so coming up, we interviewed Megan Rapino. Uh, she joined us for a candid, thoughtful, and honestly, sometimes tough conversation about what it means to play and how it affects us, and eventually how we'll have to stop playing someday. So don't go anywhere. That's next. Here we are this evening. Lucky, lucky us to have Megan Rapino list every accomplishment and amazing quality of a person in the whole wide world right here. Um, Lynn and Pino are together in New York and here I am in Boston. So jealous that I'm not there, but Pino is coming on snacks, everybody. And we're so excited to have her and welcome to the show. Yay, Megan. Oh, who do you think's head smaller now that I'm looking at yours? It's honestly you. And that's like <laughs> amazing. Cause I have just a teeny tiny little peanut. Head. I wish Christy was in this shop because her head would be so big. <laughs> it's Christy does have a big squares. head. Like <laughs> I was looking at it at training the other day and I was like, she has a large dome. Yeah. And she does have like a long, you guys do have long necks. Um, oh. So it's a little, cause has got a block on top of a long neck. Love you, girl. Um, so here we are. We're recording this before the FIFA window. And mm-hmm. we figured, while well, we have this opportunity, we might as well just take full advantage and do a whole episode around Megan Rapino and all of the life lessons that she could teach all of us. Megan Rapino yeah. is like our wisest, most trusted friend and teammate. And mother. Because I've made so many mistakes. You've lived so many lives. I've lived so many lives. So this episode is going to be giant life left Whoa. giant life lessons from life you leffins. to us <laughs> life <laughs> lessons <laughs> life <Adam> lessons <laughs> with mcfiff repinoff <laughs> i love that i'll do my best i mean lord knows i'm still learning my gosh well we're all just learning sis but what have you learned lately like what's like in the last week two weeks month what's been like oh my god i just learned a life lesson I'm really working on slowing down right now. I think we like all live these lives that have like a lot going on in them. Um, We live sort of like fast paced lives. I think it's just easy to like just get in it. And even sometimes I find myself like ripping through my phone and I'm like ripping into a text, ripping back to an app, (laughs) ripping to, I'm like, you have 75 seconds. 
or more likely to just just slow down. You don't need to do this all at the same time. So I'm really trying to like slow down and not just like enjoy because I think that's important too. Like I always want to like enjoy life and slow down and I don't, you know, have that much longer to play, not live. I was like, Whoa. Are they, they going to? I know. I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> I don't have that much longer to play. So I want to enjoy <laughs> every, I mean, Jesus, look at us already. Um, but like, just kind of take time to like slow down and suss things out a little bit. Sometimes I can get ahead of myself. How do you do that? Like I, well, I was just on crutches for eight weeks. And so things couldn't have been going slower, <laughs> literally. Yeah, yeah. But I still, and I can't imagine what you guys are going through right now being in the season's just starting. It's a World Cup year. You have photo shoots. You have people calling you. You have all this stuff going on. I even feel like I'll lose hours of the day on my phone, on my computer, answering an email. Like, who's even emailing me? What do you mean I'm answering emails? What am I doing? So I'm like, at you guys, how do you slow down when you have all this stuff going on? Yeah, I would ask you the same <laughs> question because I feel like you have a lot. Like, Sam, I feel – well, I don't, I'm not going to speak for you, but I feel like I have a lot in, like – I have to prepare to do this and and obviously prepare for snacks and stuff like that. But other than that, I like lay down and I'm just like, I'm just going to lay on the couch, this uncomfortable couch that I've been trying to get rid of for years. <laughs> this is a plug for Lynn to sell her couch. Please find her on Facebook Marketplace because she really wants somebody to buy yeah, from her. Somebody, come on. The couch that Lynn Williams has been laying on? Yeah, get it's rid of it. It's a hot commodity. Yeah. Put it on OnlyFans or something. Jeez. Is that how that works? <laughs> Just a couch. A couch on my own. Yeah. <laughs> Lynn's laid on this couch before. Um, but like, I feel like you have so much going on. Like yeah. you're in everything. How do you, like what, how? I do have a lot of help. I will say that first and foremost. Um, after 2019, I um, hired this woman, Jessica, that's like business partner, thought partner, like really just sort of like manages my whole life. Obviously I have my agent. Um, so that is really helpful. Like that takes a lot off of my plate. Um, I mean, I spend more time procrastinating writing back to emails than actually writing the emails. And then I get to it finally. And I'm like, you know, I get all prepared and get myself ready. And it's like, it takes, you know, two minutes because it's, it's like, and then people email right back and I'm like, I'm not prepared. For that. <laughs> now I'm really not prepared. Um, so, you know, Jessica and Dan are huge help for me in that sense. I am trying to be a lot more like intentional about the way that I spend my time. I'm trying not to just like get lost in my phone, whether that's like social media or doing other things. Obviously I'm on social media and I, you know, use it for a lot of different reasons. I like it. Um, there's just like a social aspect to it. I love like looking at outfits and like seeing what people are up to, but then seeing there's also like videos of Post Malone dancing, sending them to me. Yeah. Sending them to Sam. Um, he's not better than Pat, but pretty cool. He's pretty awesome. And I, yeah, I try to like intentionally sort of block out times that I don't have to do anything that I can just, you know, be at home or chill with Sue or, you know, take those little times. But honestly, it is really busy. Sometimes I'm like, this is so busy. I just want to sit and do nothing. It's actually easier in season and especially I'm a little bit injured right now which makes it a little bit harder because you got to do your rehab and all the things. But in season, I actually love because it's like, I'm sorry, I can't go anywhere. I have to be mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Like my schedule's totally set and, you know, we can kind of plug things in where we can. But yeah, just like really trying to take the moments that come, and, or, you know, whether it's an afternoon or a day off, like we're in the city. We had yesterday off. I spent the whole day in the city and just kind of like relax. New York City, that is. I just feel like it's... What did you do? Um, you were shopping? I went shopping a little bit. Um... I like had some meetings in my hotel, chilled, had a nice breakfast, ended up going to the Nets game. I saw that. Yeah, it was chill. It was like really nice. So like taking those times to enjoy and like trying to do that. I don't even know. I mean, doing therapy, I'm, you know, I'm paying, paying hundreds of dollars to try to figure this out every week. We talked about that though um, last time, Sam, I think when like when COVID first happened, everybody was like, you're not doing anything. Come on oh, everything. Yeah. I think now that season is so crazy, it's an excuse to be like, no, yeah, I can't. So sorry, can't. So busy. And also people, people, we are really busy as professional athletes, but some of the busy time is like scheduled rest. It's like, I can't yeah. do it at this time because this is nap time and that's just what it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I got to so do I the big legs for that. 60 minutes and that is, yeah. I'm unavailable. 
and available. I lean into that a lot. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so busy. Or someone will say that for me. It's great. She's yeah, so busy. You just mentioned um, you're, that you're doing therapy. Mm-hmm. How's that? I love it. Yeah. PSA for therapy. Everybody go to therapy. I would, I wish that I would have started younger. Um, that would be, I mean, I don't know. I guess you come to it when you're ready. So mm, I wish I would have started younger, but it's not a sports psych, just regular therapy. No, regular therapy. Okay. Sports psych, I'm like child's play. I get it. <laughs> Show up, sports, I get it. I probably could use a sports psych maybe when I was younger. I don't know. But I, I think haven't, actually I the- haven't talked to my sports psych about sports in a exactly. while. Well, about, <laughs> about sports in a way. Yeah. But yeah, I totally get what you're saying, Pino. That's like really amazing that you're doing that. And I'm mm-hmm. so glad that it's like seems to be helping. Yeah. It's, it's really been like the best thing ever. I mean, it's been really hard and confronting. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually finding that a lot of what has benefited me in sports, I don't know if, if you feel it's also like the sort of adaptive qualities that we have to have as athletes. Like there's something inherently like not great about being an athlete. Like you have to push so much to the side. You have Mm -hmm. the singular focus. You're expected to show up essentially in being the same person, bringing the same level, which is excellent every single day. Like, and if you think about it, it's like, you don't really want something bringing all their emotions to practice every day. That's a lot. Like you can't really have that. You have to kind of you know, compartmentalize and sort of push things out. And that I think has served me really well in soccer. I don't know how well that like really serves me in life. It's it's <laughs> probably, you know, it's like disassociation is like a good thing in some ways. It can be like an adaptive trait, but it's not always a dad's maladaptive in other parts of life. So just trying to like dig more into that. And, you know, we all have like childhood stuff. We all have just like ways that we operate that I never really thought about before or never really thought that I had to, but it's all kind of part of continuing to just be like a whole person. I mean, I think it's, it's helped me in ways in sports. I mean, I think being a better leader, just being like more aware of myself and my impact and sort of how I show up in, in places and rooms. But I think this is much more of like just a life thing and trying to be the best little version of Maggie that I can. Do you feel like you have had to come to that now that you're more in like the light, the limelight? Like, do you think you would have come to therapy if you were, if 2019 didn't happen? Because I feel like that's where you went from like soccer famous to like famous, famous. You know, it's interesting. I feel like I've been thinking about this a lot recently in therapy. It's like, is kind of what I was saying about like adaptive versus maladaptive, like when it sort of works for you as an athlete and when it doesn't, it's like literally the president of the United States was like, hate tweeting me by name in the biggest moment of my professional career. It's crazy. And I was like kind of unfazed and sickly motivated by it. I was like, okay, sir. Okay. Oh, big day for Trump today. Also, <laughs> Trump Trump got indicted today. Um, Speaking good job. Of. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, hush money to a porn star while being president of the United States. So, oh dear, that, that's happening. But like, I think back to that to the, like a moment like that, or just like that whole tournament, or just even like the lead up, and just how much we were dealing with, and then having to go out on the field to perform. That's not normal. Like, that's not, like, when you really think about it, like, that's like, not normal. Yeah, but then I'm like, that's the bizarre. way you performed, like, that was crazy. I know, that's, I think, the, like, disassociation, to but be honest. Like, you, so know, you know, most people, when they go into big tournaments, are like, I'm going to delete Twitter. I can't go online. I can't see all these things. You were tweeting at the president, and he was tweeting back. Like, what? Nobody does and that. And then, it. well, <laughs> he started it. <laughs> well, I said what I said, not on Twitter. Oh, that's true. Was like, that was months that before even, wasn't it? Yeah. Is there like a pressure to that, to being like, I kind of have to like get this right because people like listen to me? Yeah, there Yeah, there definitely is. I think there's definitely a, a pressure to be educated and to say the right things. But also I think like a, a pressure to like use the platform that we have. And I think we are in a really privileged we're in an interesting, like, I feel like female athletes just in general, always in this place of like being either like the, you know, group that's discriminated against in like the broader sense or the privileged one 
in like a group of people who are discriminated against. So mm. it's like, I think of myself, it's like, I, you know, am gay and I'm a woman. So those are, you know, things that I'm have to sort of like battle against, but I'm also like rich and white. So it's like, okay, those are like two very, very privileged things. And I think having the opportunity to play for America so often and so long. So it's like, that's another piece of privilege. So it's like, I feel the pressure to use all of that platform to like continue to, you know, know how to speak about trans kids playing sports and know how to speak about Black Lives Matter or, you know, equal pay issues. Cause it's kind of like, I know what it's like. Like we all know what it's like to be in this group and just be like, this isn't fair. Like what's happening to us isn't fair. So it is a pressure. Cause yeah, sometimes I'm like, oh man, I need to really do my research. Like I need to be on point because the other side is really just looking for anything to like pick it apart. And again, I have like a lot of help in doing yeah. that. And you know, not just Jessica and Dan, but like I have just like, you know, I think of like Chase Strangio, who's a an, uh, a trans guy. He's a lawyer for the ACLU. So like he's like a trusted advisor. Chris Moser is another one. Mike De La Rocha works for Athletes for Impact. Another one. There's like all of these people who help me sort of like use the microphone mm. that I have. But yeah, sometimes it is a lot of pressure. Sometimes you want to just like you know, just be a normal pers person and yeah, like, like watch chill. Love is Blind and be like, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Soon, yeah, Sue and I talk about all the time. It's like, you know, all these male professional athletes that have podcasts, like every time they have men on, they just like get on and shoot the shit and like have a ball. They're having a ball or talking about whatever they want to talk about. And then every time they have a woman on, they're like, we're going to talk about equal pay. We're going to talk about trans, mm. trans kids playing sports because women's sports is under attack. We're going to talk about all these different things. And it's like, we do want to talk about that, but like we're a whole person yeah. also. Like, we like shooting the shit and talking about just like funny stuff also. But then, you know, there's, it's like, well, life isn't fair and here we are and we, we need to make it better. And I think the amount that we have talked about things just as a team and all of us individually, like. Think about where we were five years ago. Think about where we were 10 years ago. Think about where we're going now. Like it's, it's pretty amazing to be a part of. Okay, so while you're all doing all that and you're trying to slow down, how do you fit in all of that and soccer and also like you're somebody who loves to like just shoot the shit and have banter with people? Like mm -hmm. how do you fit all of that in your life in 24 hours? Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you don't fit it all in. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes you don't. And I think that's okay too. Um, I think as I've gotten older to the, what's, what's required of me to like be at the highest level of my sport is different. Physically, it takes a lot more. It's like, oh my God, these warm ups are forever and all the work that you have to do when you get older for all the, all the ailments that are, you know, in the body at all times. So it's like that part's harder, but there's, there's like so much knowledge that I have already. It's like, I, you know, when we sort of layer on different levels of tactics or we're gonna like tweak the way that we wanna play or I'm gonna like tweak the way that my position plays, like it comes pretty easily. So I feel like that stuff is a lot easier um, and, and comes naturally, it comes more naturally because I have kind of like that base. Yeah, this might be a little uh, change of subject into a life lesson from Sam Mewis, but I think something I've learned recently is that like different relationships like fill kind of fill different buckets. And like, I feel since I haven't for the first time for it, for this time I've been home doing my rehab, I haven't been like around a team, like physically with a team. And I'm missing that kind of like female energy and joking around in the locker room. And I don't know, gossiping about whatever, like just kind of like shooting the sh with my friends, like in a big group. And I'm finding that like, I'm really like looking for that, but I'm that I can't really expect any one other person in my life to kind of fill that whole bucket. I just, I need to like create it or like look for it or spread that need around a little bit. And I've found that, yeah, like you don't, you can't like fulfill every need necessarily every day or like with just one person. And so I've, I've just found myself maybe like FaceTiming Lynn or Christy or Steph like more kind of like looking for that I don't know if that like makes sense or rings true to either of you but just that idea that like different relationships kind of like fill different buckets of what you need yeah I think that that's something that scares me about 
ever having to retire because when so I obviously have a little elbow injury right now um after the game in the locker room like the team was just helping me so much like take off my clothes get my clothes on put my hair in a bun all the things that I I literally said out loud I was like gosh I've missed this like I've missed teams and Mm. my teammates and Mm. I I agree Sam like we were looking for that in in um Kansas City but but we were still with the team and so we were like trying to figure out and now that you're like even more isolated I can only imagine how difficult it's been I think there's so much about sports that's so unique and that's like so amazing and that it is not able to be replicated like not just the amazing moments that we've had or like the winning or championships or, you know, amazing sort of like personal accomplishments, but like the bus rides and the, you know, top level of that weird Hilton that we were in. You know what I always or think about is in, staying in up until midnight with Rose eating goldfish from the snack room and then her tiptoeing back to her room because we like stayed up late and were eating snacks. <laughs> like, I thought you were going to be in trouble what, for staying yeah, up Yeah, like when midnight. am I, like who's ever going to like come over and eat goldfish with me until midnight? Like it's just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like know. those little in between. It's like the connective tissue moments, like yeah. the locker room moments, the funny moments, the like your coach will say something wild and you just like catch someone's eye and you're like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening right now? Like I know. all of those moments. And I think, you know, watching Sue go through her last year and like just having so many conversations with her about it, like she she kind of got to this point that was like, I'm not I'm not trying to be ready to leave this and I'm not trying to like feel like everything is like perfectly done. Like there's just there's going to be stuff that I miss forever. Like it it's going to be this like love that you don't really ever get over. Like she's never going it's nothing is ever going to be the same and nothing is ever going to like replicate that moment even in a different way. You're going to have to like just have this beautiful love story with this thing that you've loved for so long and like poured your heart and soul and mind and body into and then you're gonna miss it and that's okay and then you're gonna like go into life and find sort of different things but I think that idea of just like knowing that you're gonna miss it and being okay with the fact that you're gonna miss it kind of takes the pressure off being like I'm perfectly ready and I've accomplished everything that I want and like the tank is empty and I'm totally ready to move on to this next life it's like what that doesn't exist and I think that's what's hard for athletes and I think sometimes when you frame it like that, you never feel ready. So then it's like this this like real tension field filled like angst that we have. It's tough. Yeah, that was like a, cra- a very emotional, crazy answer. I had me in all in my feelings, Pino. How has it been for Sue? Like how has she adapted? And do you think she, like I think you just said you feel like she's done a good job not replacing it, but accepting that things are going to be different and she'll always love playing basketball. But you can't just replace it with something else. Like how has her last mm-hmm. few months been? Before you answer that, I think like that is the most important piece, I guess, from what I got is that like it isn't about replacing it. Mm. It's just accepting it. And I I feel like, Sam, we've talked about this where we're like, I've done this for so long. Is something going to give me as much joy and mm-hmm. fulfillment as this? We say that all the time. Yeah. And I guess that's that's a replacement kind of thought mm-hmm. process instead of just – it's almost kind of like in a sad way, like mourning a loss, just being like that's yeah. the end of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm life will go on just differently. Yeah. I think that's exactly it. I think it's – and I think that's what is so difficult for athletes – Cause you're like waiting for this moment of clarity where you're like, I'm ready to walk away. When it's like, actually, this is the littest job you could ever have. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so hard and it tests you and it like, you know, rakes you over the coals every single day. But it's also so rewarding in so many ways. There's like so many physical benefits and so many emotional benefits and friendships and like it's taken us all over the world and we've like experienced some crazy stuff and like, you know, good, bad, and everything in between. Like there's there's nothing that's going to be like that. And that's, that's kind of like, okay. So I feel like Sue kind of like got to that at the end. I feel like that's, what's like giving me this like perspective on things. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Not trying to like not miss it. Cause of course you're always going to, especially if you like, you know, play at the highest level. Like we all play pro and we all play, you know, for our country and like get to do these incredible things. Like that's just like, that's amazing. Yeah. 
now that we're on the topic of Sue a little bit, um, you guys have a production company. Yes, we do. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? I want to hear more about this. I've been reading articles about this Pino for months and you need to tell me more (laughs) now, please. Um, So we started our own production company called It Touch More. Um, that was born out of the pandemic. We had our little Instagram show, which was just <laughs> hilarious. A hoot, an absolute hoot. We had so much fun doing it. That was obviously more of a sort of live podcast style. We were th- we were talking about it the other day, or maybe like a couple months ago. That was like we were just sitting in our apartment by ourselves, yeah, staring at a screen. Yeah, that yeah. was you know two by four, and you guys just decided to like just make th- something just hauling off and laughing and everything. It was just like, but then you think about that. It's like, there's no live audience. There's no, like, there's no laugh tracks. And then we're just freaking sitting there. Laughing at yourselves. Apartment, laughing at ourselves. Having an absolute ball. Anyway, so that's where like, you know, the, the sort of genesis of it was. Um, and just, yeah, like creating, it wasn't just like, we kind of like put effort into it. We like produced this, like, you know, minimally produced this like fun little show for ourselves. Um, so that's kind of where the, the sort of genesis was. Obviously, we want it to be more than just a live Instagram show. We would love, you know, this sort of like production company, studio, whatever you want to call it, to be a place where really like revolutionary stories, storytellers, filmmakers, artists, creatives, whether that's like athletes telling stories or, you know, my, you know, my and Sue's ambition is to be way beyond athletes for those kinds of stories to live. Like in a lot of ways, all of us have like lived revolutionary lives. Like we're doing stuff that's never been done. We're we're pushing sport in our respective sports to a place where it hasn't been before, whether that's equal pay or soon her CBA, the WNBA, how you know popular and successful that is now, the NWSL and how popular and successful that is. Like, you know, the national team where it is now, like it, it wasn't always going to be there. Like we like did that as a group and as a generation and like it's continuing on. So like to me, we're sort of like living in this revolutionary period and we've all kind of been architects of it in our own ways. And we like love that. So I feel like we like all of us kind of have an eye for that and have like a passion for that. And we want to kind of like pay that for like we want to collaborate with people who also have that kind of vision in whatever spaces. And then, of course, it's like. Well, whose stories hasn't haven't been able to be told? Who's been cut out of everything? Um, and I think you know, with with women, this seems to always be the vibe of like our production company is not going to be in the archetype of Sue and I. Like our story's been told a thousand times over, mm-hmm. and it will continue to be sold, you know, told because we'll continue to sort of like be in the mix. This isn't about like yeah, doing everything. That's like this is what we want the story to be. This is about us leveraging everything we've been able to do and all the success and all the privilege we have to be like, what else needs to be told and what other stories and what other, you know, creatives or filmmakers or whatever it is, can we sort of collaborate with to like bring their story. And I just like love working with people who are amazing in their own field. I always like find that even if it's like on photo shoots, I'm always like the photographer. I'm like, wow, this is just like, that's crazy. Like you're just incredible at at what you do, and you know to be able to be in that space with those people, I think is really cool. So that's a brief synopsis, but we would love to kind of like slow roll into it. We don't want to like do anything, you know, too fast. We would be really intentional and have it be something that lives forever. Is there are there any like lessons you've learned already, like entering into a new space or starting a business with your partner or? Any any other life lessons from starting this new thing? Oh my gosh, so many. Um, <laughs> to be very clear about what you want and be very like intentional about that, both with each other and with the people that we're working with. Um, I think working, you know, for us together, it's like I think a lot of a lot of times like our our businesses are ourselves, especially as athletes. It's like you have your kind of like brand, and I have my own brand, and Sue has her own brand, and those sort of respective businesses. So it's like the collaboration of us coming together and sort of the give and take. I can tend to be a little bit of a steamroller. So I'm trying to trying to put that maybe in the neutral, not do that as much. Um, you know, so for both of us to like come to it with something more than what we can just bring <clears throat> on our own. 
And I think the other thing is like transitioning into like being the boss. Like mm. we are the boss. Like there's no, there's no, even just in like my own business, like, you know, I feel like making that transition in the last couple of years, it's like, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. It's like, that's what I want, but it's like, it's hard to step into that and realize like, this is, this is really the business of Megan Rapino, you know, and ultimately it's what I want to do. And I think the more step into it and the more clear I am, like the more comfortable I feel in that. So I think for both of us to be able to kind of like step in that space and be like, you know, we have a lot to offer. And then mm -hmm. I think just like our, the, the ability for team, I feel like this is where, you know, when people always say like, oh, athletes are the best hires. Like everybody wants yeah. to hire athletes. And we're always like, why? We don't even know how to use Excel. Like, I don't even, what are you talking about? No. We're 50 years behind on all things like office supplies. Like we don't know what's going on. But I think this, these areas are where we're like so good at collaborating and like, you know, bringing other people in and like the sort of like cliche, like teamwork aspects and like putting your best foot forward, like for the team. Yeah. Like, I think we can sort of do both. It's like we are the boss, but ultimately, like, we want the best product. And I believe that that happens when everybody is able to be their best selves. I have a question, but I have something to say. I think it's so unique. It's always been unique to me that as female athletes, and I think when you get as high as us, like, for the most part, we're all pretty, like, strong women. But then there comes this, like, other side where because we've always been like kind of told like this is the schedule you're going to be on and of course we all want to play soccer but this is the team you get to go to and this is the this and this you never really make a decision for yourself mm -hmm. so then when you become your own boss and you have to make your own decisions it's like a unique skill set that we don't really have mm -hmm. so has that been sam we talk about yeah this all the me time and i talk about this all the time i always go when i had this opportunity to go to man city I was looking around like, well, who's deciding this? Yeah. Like, as it, like, mm -hmm. it, genuinely feeling like it wasn't up to me. Mm -hmm. And I feel it hit home really when you said, like, I'm the boss now. I, like, find myself apologizing all the time during projects that, like, I've initiated. And it's like, <laughs> I, why am I being like, oh, I'm so sorry that I just, like, maybe thought about this. And they're like, I, you don't need to, like, say sorry for that. Like, it's crazy that, that I don't see myself as in charge of really anything. I yes. think it's like society tells us also, like uh, you can like, especially as female athletes, like, oh, uh, you can like be successful with like not, not too much, mm. you know, or like it's cool here or like we know best here or like you should do it like this. And it's actually like, no, nothing that you, it's like the world wasn't really created for us. So nothing's really gonna work. Even if we do it exactly how you want us to do it, you're still not gonna let us in. So like we might as well be our own bosses because that's really the only way to get anything done. I have like so many comments like I'm making notes in our script because I don't want to forget stuff to say like I have a million things going through my head because I'm just so interested in everything you're saying you mentioned that your life lesson <laughs> can you read them it says no want and dinners question mark so my first one what does that mean exactly I'm about to say <laughs> my first one you mentioned in your like life lesson about starting kind of this new venture was to like be intentional about what you want and like be like say that clearly what if you don't know what you want? Like, what if you have two things or three things? They all have pros. They all have cons. Like, how do you make big decisions and, like, work through what's best for you while weighing what's best for Sue or what's best for the company or what's best for your career or what has more money? What has more opportunity? Like, how do you weigh all of those things? Yeah, sometimes that is really hard when it's like you don't really have a – a gut feeling about it and you're trying to weigh all the pros and cons and like, you know, people that you really trust and, but it is ultimately up to us. Um, I mean, we've had so many conversations where we're just like, I don't know, like, let's <laughs> just keep dice. going through the pros. Yeah. Let's keep going through the pros and cons. Um, I think this is where Sue is like a master, like her ability to hold everything in her head at the same time, like all of the different sort of like options fully played out is like where she thrives. It's actually like amazing. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you like a beautiful mind kind of situation? <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> what is happening in that brain? Whereas like, it's it's very hard for me to do that. I feel like I have like a, a feel for things. That's more how 
I operate or like more like a gut feeling or I'm just like, that's kind of like what I see. But I think the combination of those two work really together, uh, work, work really well together. And then I think we have people that we really trust that sometimes we're just like, what do you guys like? What do we really think? Sometimes too, it's like we're splitting hairs over something that absolutely doesn't matter. Yeah. And people are like, it doesn't matter. And we're like, okay, just, just do whatever. Um, and then I think being okay with just like making a decision and if it's, you know, hopefully nothing like catches on fire, but sometimes it does. And you're like, well, lesson, lesson learned. Yeah. Sam, I feel like you are like that a little bit where you have like all of the things in your brain all at one time. Oh, it is so overwhelming. I, don't, I mean, yeah. I don't know that I can like, I, I think Sue sounds like she's very like composed in the situation when she's playing out all these scenarios. And for me, each result is something to panic about. <laughs> I'll give you an example. We had to please, just cut. We just stay. had to cut down a tree in our yard. We have a we have a small yard. We're part of like a condo association, so it was like kind of a thing. Like we had to like get the people to come cut it down and then grind up the stump. And our patio is coming up. And I'm going through all the scenarios and decisions. Keep in mind, you guys, it doesn't fucking matter. It literally doesn't matter if we cut down this tree. It doesn't matter if we don't. It doesn't matter. No, nothing bad or good is really going to come of this. And I have made this into this huge ordeal where I'm imagining that our patio is going to get ruined and then the tree, we're going to have to hire an arborist to come in and remove the tree because it's going to be so big for the space. Pat going, well, we're just not going to have any shade in the summer now. So that's maybe something to consider. And now I'm playing, I'm just playing all of this out in a million ways. Realistically, somebody came and cut it down, grind up the stump and it's over and doesn't, it just doesn't matter. I live my life in like a, well, I'll just fix it. Like if something's broken, I'll just fix it. Like if the I live car in gets a preventative, dinged, I'll just fix it. I'm in a preventative, constant oh, prevention. Future anxieties yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah. Like I just think I'm like, what's the word? I'll just fix it. My couch sucks. Eventually I'll just fix it. Who wants my couch? Yeah, Somebody yeah, come down. <laughs> we got to link the Facebook marketplace. Anyways, um, it's a World Cup year. Oh my gosh. Again. Can Again. Can you believe it? Thrilling. And there's not even, it's been four years. It seems like it's been like 15. Oh my gosh. We were in a time warp. We, we were. were in a time warp. The whole year delay of the Olympics really threw me yeah. in the loop. That was wild. Really threw me. Okay, well, we are going to take a quick break and then we'll get into the World Cup right after this. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Snacks. We're with Megan Rapino, and we're talking World Cup 2023. Are you approaching this 2023 world cup like any differently than you did in 2019 or are you just like let's do it let's run it back let's do it again in some ways completely differently and in some ways exactly the same i mean my my like role on the team is like completely different um which i actually really love and enjoy i mean i still love to play and i want to play all the time and sometimes i'm like at 60 minutes i'm like she's ready no, but I really do like love my role and like I love that I'm still able to do that. I think my um, it's like position specific, like not every position can, you know, only be playing limited minutes or having the kind of role that I do. I think it's still useful, hopefully. I mean, hopefully people aren't like, oh, God, she's coming again. Like, it's terrible. What a bugaboo. She's so old, you know? No, I don't think anyone's saying that. No. I'm still fun. I'm still fun, aunt. Fun grandma. Um <laughs> But yeah, it's like we want to run it back. We yeah. want to win. Yeah. We want to win everything all the time. We want to win every game. We want to win everything. World Cups are just so cool. Like this one's going to be so much better than the last one, which was so much better than the last one. Um, it's in a really cool place. So I think that's exciting like for everyone. Um, the team is looking great. These little kids are just good. Yeah. Everyone's are. just good. I'm like, good God. But yeah, we want to freaking win. Period. Yeah. Everything's awesome when you win. And it is not awesome when you don't win. It is no. not. It is not. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. um, P, I forgot to tell you. Remember the last game we played and you played that ball through and I almost got there? Yeah. I banged my shin so hard into the keeper. I still have a lump No. that hurts. Like still is it right like now. Is a calcified lump? Yeah. I have one. He, excuse my leg. <laughs> Please. Oh, please put them on my counter. Right here. <laughs> that is just like, I don't yeah. know who gave yeah. it to me. 
Pink. I got and it, somebody banged me. Someone in the NWSL. Okay, banged me. Feel that. Oh, Lynn, that's very big. We need to get some Graston yeah. on that. It's oh, huge. Sucks. It's a huge. Like, we need to get some grass on big, that. You guys can't see that because this is an audio medium. But yeah, it an is. Audio medium. We have been saying that yeah. every oh, one time, you guys. I, can't even I got one of those. And I. Please tell had, us. And I had to. I was instructed to go have Marie, the massage therapist, no. work it out. Pass. No. Guys. Did you die? <laughs> Blessings. <laughs> Marie is an incredible massage therapist. I was crying in so much pain. Okay, P, can you walk us through the PK situation and like why you're so good at them? Oh my gosh. Like why and um, how? But and don't what? give away any secrets yet. Well, Sam, I think I told you this in 2015 as we were doing our PKs in 2019 and we were preparing for the World Cup and I was like, you were having some nerves mm. and you're, you were mm. stressing panicking a Panicking about bit. taking one and panicking yeah. about not taking one. They're both exactly. horrible options. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And I was like, you know, the worst thing that could happen is if you have to step up there and you take it and it's like the final one and you lose the World Cup for our country. Oh, my God. <laughs> you did not. Did you say that to me? <laughs> yes. Did you black it out? I was yeah, like, that's the clearly. worst thing that could happen. I don't know. It's, But the best thing that could happen is you win the World Cup for your country. So I think I always like focus on that. That's like that I think was this- like horrible advice. That's what? a special sauce. I mean, it works, like, for, it I works like for her. It works for you. It. Yeah, for you. Just saying it, though, and, like, getting it out. Like oh, so getting it's, like, the not in your body out. anymore. Yeah, like, getting okay, the that's anxiety out and getting the fears out there. It's, like, literally the worst thing you have when you step up and if you I miss, miss it. If I miss, I miss. Yeah, yeah it and then sucks. life goes on. Like, if I, I die, I die. Them. Yeah, you know, if you die, you die. It's, like, what are you, you going to do? I think routine is, like, huge. Do you say that to yourself every time? If I miss this, I miss. If I goes in, it goes in. I never think I'm going to miss. Um, but I know that I can miss. I'm like, well, I mean, somebody could save it or I could just boot it God knows where. I mean, I, I know that I can miss. I know that it's possible, but I don't think I am. Yeah. And it's like, I do the exact same thing, but it's not like a superstition thing where I like, oh, oh my God, I had to, you know, I took yeah. three steps instead of four steps. It's not like that. It's just like, go through the routine. I like, you know, want to feel comfortable. Laura Harvey gave us, remember she gave us all that mm-hmm. breath stuff? Oh, yeah. So I've added that. Everybody, like, you can breath. see everybody does it too. Yeah. <sighs> yep. And I... then, you know, you just like trust yourself. I think the enticing nature of scoring goals outweighs the like anxiety mm-hmm. of not because I'm like, ooh, there's a good yeah, moment. There, re- yeah. there really is nothing better than scoring goal. goals. Oh, so you know? It feels so good. So good. Pino, we have like a really, really important question for you to announce on snacks. What color oh. is your hair going to be at the World Cup? Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know, but I think some version of pink and purple. I mean, it cha- it's like, it changes every day, but I think this is the best. I've, I I've, love it. Yeah. I've dabbled in some other colors and I don't think it was good. Do you do it in the hotel by yourself or do you get it done? Or like, what is the sitch? Because it doesn't it ro- like wash right out. Yeah. The flow is really like, I'll go get my hair done. I have to do like a full bleach and then they put the pink on top. Mm-hmm. And then that lasts, you know, however long I, don't know, I got my hair work done. This is like, well, probably you, over a month ago now. Yeah, so there's like no of, undercut anymore. Yeah, it's like depends on like how how many times I've washed it or what point of the season. Like sometimes it falls out quicker. In the summer it falls out quicker because I'm like sweating more. Um, but then, yeah, I just have like a, it's basically a conditioner. I just throw it in there. And I'm, I just like am not precious about it either. I'm like, it looks how it looks. What? It's freaking dyed pink. If it looks, you know, trashy. It's because it's p- wild pink hair and I did it in my Marriott room. <laughs> yeah. And then I was just, I need to get like better clippers. But if, if I do this short on the bottom, then I can just do it, yourself? Do it myself and just zoom, zoom, zoom. Because it doesn't last you know, that I'm long. here for that. I can, do, yeah. would you, did you hear if I cut my own hair? <laughs> did you hear that what? she goes to Supercuts? No. I went to Supercuts on Tuesday. How did it go? I got a friggin' trim. It's fine. <laughs> there's no issue. I mean, that didn't look it's great, fine. but there's no problems. <laughs> It's fine. One time I got my hair cut at camp and it wasn't good. And was Rose it was, like a blunt cut? It was just, yeah, it was just really short. Like probably cut like five inches off. Like Ooh, it was like just real short. Mm. And it was one of those ones where like you can't put it in a ponytail because it's like too short. So you like have to do a little bun for like a while, you know? How old were you when this happened? Oh, I was like 25. Oh, it was a couple <laughs> years ago. 
it was re- yeah. recently and rose goes oh my god like what happened like are you upset because she was like with me and i go oh no it's fine i just like can't wear my hair down for a few months and rose was like <laughs> like horrified that i said that but that was just like kind of my answer and i like kind of stand by it well all right i think on that note girls we're gonna wrap this one up thank you so much for coming on pino this was so much fun yeah thank you love you guys can we get a oh my god that was so good i want to do one too i want it credited that's like we need to like get that sound (laughs) yeah yeah oh we need to like we need do you want a bunch oh my You guys, I can't, I like literally like can't believe it. It's the perfect little. That's what we've been looking for. Okay. Thanks to Megan. That was great. We love you. Thank you for coming on next week on the podcast. Week four, Alex Morgan. I know. Get excited. Woo. Um, so we are going to interview Alex Morgan. We're going to talk about all the weekends and to be sell games. Um, we will get Alex's thoughts about the upcoming world cup and maybe ask her some fun things that you've always wanted to know about her. Don't forget to rate and review and one last thing sam ah we never have this so we need to work on it um one last I have thing one last thing oh go go I, Please. I don't know what people are gonna think about this but i am reading prince harry's book oh wild not where i thought you were going at all i know but i'm and reading it i'm about halfway thoughts? through and i've been flying through it in my outdoor reading sessions mm, and in your spring in my in spring sp- um well Give us a like a one to five through the half of the book rating. I mean, it's a really good book. Like I know there's like hot takes about. I just said give us a rating. One to five. Uh, It's pretty freaking good. Four and a half. Great. Four and a half. All right. With that, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, or wherever you get your podcasts. Snacks is produced by Jay Wolf, Lauren Day, Patrick Godino, and John Murray. For more great women's sports content, go to JustWomenSports.com and be sure to follow Just Women Sports on all your favorite channels. I'm Sam Mewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And you've been listening to Snacks. 